Okay, so in this video we're going to look at 2D and 3D firing gas mapping and I'm going to focus on the calculation of detector coverage which is one of the major differences between 2D and 3D mapping. One of the interesting things about firing gas mapping is that there's virtually no public knowledge about how the analysis is performed. As an industry we just don't know the techniques that are being used under the hood and we certainly don't know how accurate they are. What this means is that it's very difficult for engineers to differentiate between firing gas mapping analyses done by different consultancies or different software products, since there's just no way to educate yourself to ask the right questions or to make the right judgments. Hopefully this video is a start to put that right, and certainly if you have any questions about how Detect3D works, I'm more than happy to personally answer them. Ok, let's get started. As you can see, I've imported a reasonably complex CAD model into Detect3D and I've added a fire zone shown in red and some firing gas detectors. Detect3D is a 3D firing gas mapping product, as you can see, but the nice thing about it is that I can also emulate a 2D mapping product, which allows me to directly compare 2D and 3D mapping techniques. So in this simulation, I've defined several thin fire zones in the 3D fire zone at 1 meter intervals above ground level, and they're thin enough to effectively be 2D fire zones. Now let's look at the coverage. Obviously in the 3D model, I can look at various coverage levels using ISO volumes. The coverage is simply calculated by looking at the volume of the ISO volumes and dividing it by the external volume of the fire zone. This is what defines a 3D firing gas mapping technique. It calculates the coverage by volume, so it gives you one set of volume based statistics for each fire zone. This is how coverage is calculated normally in Detect3D, since it's a completely 3D firing gas mapping software product. 2D firing gas mapping models calculate coverage by area, not by volume. And the only visualization that you can show with a 2D analysis is the plan view contour. If I go into plan view in Detect3D and make the geometry transparent, I can see the coverage in 2D, which is typically the image that you'll see in a fire and gas mapping report. This one is at ground level, and you can see the various coverage areas, with the legend shown on the bottom right. Now I can cycle through these contours at 1, 2, 3, and 4 meters height. The critical point here is that the coverage is different at each height. You can see that as I turn contours on and off. The colors dramatically change and not only does it look different but if you calculate the coverage for each of these 2D fire zones by area you can see that the coverage itself changes with height. I can demonstrate just how much the coverage changes with height using this graph. The x-axis shows coverage as calculated by the 2D model, and on the y-axis we have height above ground level. The black line shows zero coverage, the blue line is coverage by one or more detectors, and the red line is coverage by two or more detectors. You can see that the zero coverage is over 40% at ground level, but reduces to under 10% at 5 meters height, while the coverage of one on two detectors increases with height. These changes of 30 percentage points or more are very significant. They can mean the difference between complying with performance criteria or not. So now we reach a critical issue. How do we choose which height to use? Well, typically you can't say which height a fire will start, and fires themselves are 3D, and by nature cut through several heights, so it's a completely subjective decision. If you follow this line of reasoning to the end, it means that with 2D mapping, whether you comply with performance criteria or not, is completely based on a subjective decision of which height to use. This is a huge technical weakness of 2D mapping, and when you consider that virtually all fire and gas mapping in the oil and gas safety industry, and even other industries, has been performed using 2D techniques, then it brings into question a huge body of work. Contrast that with 3D fire and gas mapping, where you get one set of statistics for one fire zone, 
without any subjective decision making. Whether you comply with performance criteria is objectively based solely on the position of the detectors. I can make the same point a slightly different way using fire targets in Detect 3D. Using this technique I can add cylinders and cones in the fire zone to simulate a real fire and determine which detectors can see it. The first fire I'm going to look at is a pool fire and the question is how many detectors is this fire visible to? You can see the fire in orange and you can also see it's in a red area indicating coverage by two detectors. However the contour I'm showing is at 2 meters height and if we turn on the contour at ground level we see a completely different picture. Here the pool fire is in a region of zero visibility. So which one is it? Is it visible to two detectors as we originally saw or zero detectors? The problem is you can't really answer these basic questions with 2D mapping and you have to look at the problem in 3D before you can see that that pool fire is definitely within a zero visibility region. Now of course the coverage at ground level may have been the obvious choice for a pool fire but typically you also have to look at jet fires and I've got a jet fire target defined here. I'll just turn that on and it's shown in orange there. Again the question is how many detectors is that jet fire visible to? Of course on the ground level contour it shows zero and only in 3D can I see that it is in fact visible to one of the flame detectors. I can line them up here and it's perfectly clear but the ground level contour showed it wasn't visible to any. I can also look at the targets table in Detect 3D and actually see which detectors the fires are actually visible to. So you can see you get a much clearer and much more understandable picture of the layout and coverage in 3D. And although I've only shown flame detectors, this of course applies to gas detectors as well. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned a bit about the differences between 2D and 3D fire and gas mapping. Clearly I'm an advocate of 3D mapping and the simple reason is that the geometries we use are 3D, the detectors are 3D, the fires and gas releases themselves are 3D, so doing a 3D analysis is just the right way to do it. Of course if you want to do some 3D fire and gas mapping yourselves, just register on insightnumerics.com where you can download Detect3D and get started. Thanks very much for listening and I appreciate your comments.